Well, a very warm welcome once again, ladies and gents, and thank you again for tuning in for yet another episode of The Humble Climb. And I can't thank you, everybody, for continuing to get around us the way that you have with your subscribes and likes and rates and just general, just good comments and and uh, and personal feedback that I've been getting has uh, has actually been really, really warm to, uh, to, to receive. And uh, I'm just so pleased. So thank you for continuing to do that. Today, I've got a really cool guest on, uh, Ebony Butcher. Uh, is that correct? Uh, Boucher. Boucher. You know, I, was, I was saying it the, I was, the whole time. I was like, Boucher, Boucher, Boucher. Then I've come up with Boucher. Good one, Dim. Um, and she's a really quite cool. And the 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 point of today's, just from a, a flag point of view, is the point of today's episode is not a pity party. It is purely like, man, I don't know how this girl has got so much strength. She's amazing, 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 amazing person. And you guys will obviously find out. Uh, so Ebs, I'll call you Ebs. Is yep. that cool? That's fine. Go for it. <laughs> Ebs, welcome to the Humble Climb and thanks so much for uh, coming on. I know we've been trying to liaise this for a little while. No, thanks for having me, Dim. The way that we met was also funny because obviously in recent times, everybody has seen me fall over at an auction recently. And the first time that we met, I've come in on crutches because I uh, had oh, spray- wow. I'd fallen over on the driveway. <laughs> So just very standard dim and I've come in on crutches because that afternoon I had uh, fallen over and done my ankle on crutches and did a couple of ligaments. So um, it's quite funny the way we've met. But uh, Ebs, uh, I wanted, and everyone will understand why I've had you on once we get talking, um, but give us a little bit of background, where you're from, schools, all that type of stuff. Yep. So I actually grew up in Melbourne, yep. lo and behold. Uh, yeah. Story. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I grew up an elite athlete, actually. So I was an Same. elite. You probably can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're going to spend 90% of the time laughing. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, grew up an elite athlete. I was a gymnast, um, then morphed into aerial skiing post that. Um, went to school at Melbourne Girls College. Um, oh, and Girls then, College, okay. Yeah. And then I... Did double degree at uni, um, exercise science and business. Wow. So yeah, graduated from that in 2020. Um, all things were good growing up, very healthy, fit, active, as you can probably tell being an yeah, athlete. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it wasn't until after when I finished that things sort of changed, I guess. I was, I came back from being overseas and I got a really bad like flu sort of thing and started having seizures, um, which was a shock, I guess, to anyone. 100%. Um, and yeah, was in sort of had my first ever hospital stay. Um, and they thought it was just meningitis and they said once I was discharged that the seizures would go and they, and they did, but it wasn't until sort of three months later that I got sick again and the seizures came back sort of seemed to be like a cycle every sort of six to eight weeks I'd get sick and I'd have seizures and yeah, it sort of kept repeating itself. So we looked, started to look into it and this was in 2018, um, and yeah, I was just in and out seeing doctors, doing lots of testing and trying, we tried to figure out what was going on. That happened for a couple of years, um, but it wasn't until everything sort of changed in, and I remember this very distinctly, the 31st of May, 2021. Right. I lost vision in my right eye. So I sort of saw a black dot. Um, and I remember complaining to mum for a couple of days, just being like, oh, I'm seeing this black dot in my right eye. And I was like, oh, don't worry. It's probably nothing. After complaining for weeks and weeks, she's like, let's just go to the optometrist so you couldn't and get see it, it checked. At all. No, it was just like a black dot, sort of like the horizon. So you'd wake at up the bottom. You'd wake up, go to sleep, and all you'd see this black dot in your right eye. Yep. Right. And I just complained about it and complained about it. But after having seizures for so long and, you know, like just being, I guess, my new level of normal yeah. was just kind of unwell. But we just, you know, we didn't think anything of it as such. Eventually, mum took me to the optometrist. We went and got it checked and instantly they were like, there is something very wrong. They, you need to go and see an ophthalmologist. Right. And so she got me into a specialist. It was that or the eye in ear hospital. So we went from there straight to this other ophthalmologist. He, we waited there all day. He then saw me and um, he was like, no, nope, you need to go into hospital and now. So he sent me straight to Cabrini. I saw a neuro-ophthalmologist there who has now been one of my main doctors ever since. He ordered a plethora of testing and from that day I was in hospital for 34 days. You said 31st of May? 31st of May, 31st yeah. of May 2021. You yep. spend 34 days from that day onwards in hospital? Yep. Right. And then they're just starting to do testing nonstop? Yep, testing nonstop. I spent part of it in intensive care in a coma wow. um, because of, yeah, they, what happened was they, 
We're doing all this testing. I went down for a scope of my stomach to look down. They realized that all of this was autoimmune. There was so much connected. Um, when waking up from the anesthetic, went into all these seizures that they could not control. Um, and they couldn't even control them when I was waking up. So they just chucked a breathing tube in, started breathing for me. I actually woke up at a different hospital because Cabrini couldn't even look after me. So that was like frightening. I'd lost days, wasn't even where I thought I was. And scary part is as well, your mum's a nurse, isn't she? She is indeed. Amazing. Yeah. She thankfully was right there with me the whole time. She was there when I woke up. Like, bless her. I couldn't do any of this yeah, without no. her. She is amazing. Mums are goats. Oh, they are everything, mums, honestly. Mums are goats. Um, I've always said there's two things in life that I that, that, that are always going to be certain. Everybody, everybody is going to think that they've got the best village in Greece. And the second part is that everybody thinks their mum is the best. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> and then, yeah, I was transferred back to Carini after that. And I, pretty much 2021 I spent, and 2022, a lot of in and out of hospital. I know, I know. And seeing your stories and Instagram, and obviously we follow each other, um, uh, is just incredible. Because I remember talking about uh, when we were in hospital with you. So you would have been around that time that, that we met. So that first time when you were in there for 34 days, that would have been when we met, correct? Um, I'd come out of that 34 days and gone back in. Oh, man. I, I see. So for anyone that gives a, a, a uh, an understanding of uh, Ebony's little, uh, little journey, I guess, and that's not talking it down by saying little, but I jump on my Instagram. One day she's out at a winery. The next day she's in a hospital. Yeah. That's like pretty much it. <laughs> at the moment, like, well, I hope it's not at the moment, but it's been chaotic for her. And it's, uh, again, it is not a pity party by any means. For me, you're just so inspiring the way that you go ahead and keep tackling life because I don't even know how many tears you've probably shed in all honesty. Um, but I don't know how you keep on just standing up every single freaking day. It's, it's incredible. I think... It's actually not as many tears as you think, Dim. It's um, surprisingly enough at the I'll beginning. I probably shed more for you than yourself. <laughs> <laughs> at the beginning when I found out like that this was going to be chronic and it is going to be, I mean, I hope we get it into remission yeah. and it's going to be lifelong. And I, that's something I've, I've had, it's a hard bill to swallow and yeah. I've had to understand that. And I, I do understand it, but I had to ask myself a few really tough questions and I sat there in my hospital bed and I asked myself, how am I going to tackle this? How can I make this impactful? How can I make it meaningful? And how, what can I do with my life with this? So I sat there and I thought to myself, I can sit here and cry about this every day and I can make my life miserable. Or I can take it on with full force and I can put a smile on my face and be brave about it. And when I did that and I thought, I can, I can be positive and I can smile every day. My whole perspective about this changed and I've started to view the world in such a different way, Dim. Like that has been the be that was the best moment for me. Like I look at little things now, like the sunsets and getting fresh air and going for a walk. They are so beautiful. And to me, like I'm so happy that that moment happened because I'm like, I'm not grateful for what's happened to me, but without this happening, those moments, I don't reckon I would have got till I was like 60, 70. I'm actually speechless. <laughs> I'm genuinely actually speechless the way that you're saying this. Because now like I can go outside and I can look at the sun. And I'm like, that is just so beautiful. And listen to the leaves rustle or just look at the way my dog runs. And I'm like, that is to me, that's just a beautiful moment. This is why exactly why I wanted to have you on because it's um, it's a very different perspective that you hold about things and the cards that obviously are, that are dealt. Um, and it's exactly what the humble climb is all about. Um, is obviously bringing these stories to light. Uh, so far in 2023, how many days would you have spent in hospital, do you think? Thankfully, not as many Good. in actual hospital. I go in every month to receive immunotherapy, right. um, which is a, it's a very toxic drug. Uh, makes me worse to make me better. Right. Um, knocks me for absolute six, kills off all my cells, but it does that so that my body stops attacking myself. So how long? So when you go in now... Yep. How long do you go in for? I go in for a day. Okay. Um, and you stay in overnight or? No, just for the day. Um, I go in all day. Yeah. Um, but thankfully, that's pretty much as much as I've been in. Wow. I've had surgery. I had to put a portacath in. Which so is? It's like a central line. So it's this little, uh, little, I guess, like 
metal thing that sits yeah. in my chest wall runs to my heart um, and that's how I receive all my infusions. So wow. like when normal people go into hospital, they get the needle put in their arm. Mine just sits in my chest wall now wow. and they just access that every time instead of getting a needle. Wow. So what, they like cut to a little small incision yeah, or so a cut? Yeah, so they cut a cision, an incision, yeah. chucks it in my chest wall here. There's like a lump and now every time they can just put and the needle And it goes straight in. in. Goes right. straight into my heart as well. So it's a much easier faster oh way to access. Yeah. Wow. And so you go, and then the after effect, once you've had this, um, the treatment per, yeah. per week or sorry, touch wood per month, yeah. um, how, what's the after effect for you? Or oh, it knocks me for a good week. It, really? Physically and mentally. Um, I really feel it alter my brain chemistry actually, which is really strange to say, but I actually don't feel like myself for a good yeah. sort of week, three to five days. Um, just sleepy or sleepy, but I also feel like not depressed, but definitely down. Yeah. Right. Like I, de I'm not my usual bright, bubbly, ebony self, yeah, but exactly. I know that that's the drug. So I can cope with that. Um, and I've put things in place. Like I take time out. I, I read, I zone out. I know that that's, I'll come back. I've, I've acknowledged that I've accepted that I don't schedule anything. I take ebony time. I'll listen to podcasts, The Humble Client, like all those kind of things. Mm. Lots of Netflix. Could just plug that one. Um, I just so <laughs> um, now. Yeah. Like. And you're obviously from a point of view of being able to, because you finished studying, yeah? Yes, I yeah. have. So from a point of view of work and all that, how, what, what has this done for you? I mean, what's the, what's, what's the schedule look like? So work is the most difficult thing. Yeah. It's hard. Like how do I get a full-time job when every month I'm in hospital and – like you said, my life is chaotic. You can look and one week I'll be fine. The next week I'm in hospital. Yeah, it's crazy. So that's been my biggest, biggest challenge. I am very grateful that I am working part-time um, helping my dad's company. Good. But, and I need that. I need normality. Like if I was at home every day, how mundane. Um, I did study marketing. That's where I, I want to go. I remember talking about it. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah. Ideally, I want to get into like the sports events marketing place. I remember that. That is, that's up here. That's the goal, Dim. That's what I want to do. You know, we'll make it happen. So this monthly treatment, yep. uh, is it ongoing? It is. So as crazy as this sounds, it's meant to be, it's meant to work once every nine months. Wow. So we started at that, went to once every six, once every three months, then went to once every six weeks, and now we're at once every month, which... Yeah, it just shows how relentless this like disease that I have is being. And what's it actually called? It's a systemic autoinflammatory disorder. Right. Um, they're pretty sure it's vasculitis, systemic. How do you get it? Great question. I think it's just unlucky. They just don't right. know. Sort of like how does someone get cancer really? Yeah. Um, it's just my own immune system attacking wow. itself. And you've had, fortunately, but you've had no family traits of this or hereditariness or it doesn't work that way, obviously. No, nothing. Yeah. It's just, I was just the unlucky one. Um, but I, that's okay. I I wouldn't say I'm unlucky, Dim. I love my life. 100%. I, you know, I don't wake up and I'm upset about this. I, my life is great. I, that's why I'm so happy all the time. People look at me and they go, you're smiling. You're happy. I was like, my life is still great. Yeah. I have been given through this so many opportunities. I have met so many amazing people. Like yourself, I have so many lovely friends that I've met through this. I wouldn't be doing this, Tim. Oh, no. I I, I know. It's just I, I, I get it. I, I actually I completely get it. I, ju I just think from my point of view, we've had so many people on with different stories on this on this platform. Um, it just never surprised to, to – uh, to surprise me. Like, I mean, I have always been very, very vocal about my um, – you know, not um, – my, how I can get low, how I can feel a bit flat from time to time um, and and battle with it all and everything like that. But uh, meeting people like you, you kind of just, it makes it pretty real that, um, I don't know, man, I'm checking up a bit here, but uh, it's not fair. That's the only thing. And I know that you're not here again for the pity party, but and I definitely know that, but it's really not fair what you, what you have to go through. And... Uh, I think we're blessed that we're able to come across people like you that puts things into perspective a bit for a few of us. That's all. And, uh, yeah, you just, you, you seriously, seriously inspire, inspire me so much. And I, I just can't say that enough because you really, 
Yeah, you really do. And uh, I just think it's just not fair that a, a girl like yourself should have to go through this. But I get that you can't choose what is and what isn't fair. I get it. I get it completely. But, yeah, I just think it's uh, it's really rough. And just seeing you smile and seeing your post and you're the way that you are as a person uh, is just incredible. Like you literally bring it to you to my eye. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's – and, and don't get me wrong, I do cry and I do have my hard days and, and life, quite simply life shit, if I'm going to say it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, 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 it, it, but everyone goes, that's the thing. Everyone has their own struggles and own battles and I think that also puts it in perspective for me. Like yeah. what I'm going through is rough, but who's to say what everyone is going through in life, they're also all struggling and that helps me too. But I also have a great support network. Yeah. All my friends have been beautiful. I'm blessed to have such good friends that have stood by me as well. Talk to me from a point of view of um, obviously with you having the treatment now once a month, how much does this impact other than your daily like work schedule and stuff like that? But obviously does it impact things like being able to go on a holiday or being able to, um, I don't know, you go away as yeah, an example. It does. Um, what it does is because it really lowers my immune system. So I have to be really careful because I don't have much of an immune system. Yeah. So I can't get sick. Getting COVID, for example, is really dangerous. Wow. That's one of them that's really, really dangerous. Have you ever had it? I have. I was straight in hospital. Really? Yeah, straight. Straight, straight, straight to hospital. Um, so I can go away. It's the timing. We have to time it, obviously. Yeah. So I wouldn't be able to go for longer than like three weeks. Okay. Um, I went to Bali last year. The, yeah. do the doctors didn't like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did though. Yeah. I went anyway. That's awesome. Um, I really want to try and go to Europe next year. Yeah. Awesome. That is you partner? my goal. Yes. 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 Partner. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Um, but yes, do you want to go? Um, I want to like, I want to try and like, I try to keep a normal life. Yeah. Awesome. Touching on obviously your, your, your partner, um, cause it would be remiss not to obviously mention, um, but obviously he's been a pretty big support network for you. He has. Yep. Um, he's been great. Um, I obviously couldn't do it, you know, without his support. Yeah. Um, and I think it would always be difficult. I mean, from, for someone like himself, I imagine that is probably, uh, you know, he's new to having to deal with something, um, like this, but especially for someone that you care about so much, like, I mean, everything would feel pretty foreign, but, um, I, it would be obviously remiss not to mention him, but I mean, obviously I've met your mum, so I know what your mum's like. Yes. Talk to me through your family. Um, cause your brother, uh, you were talking off air about trying to get your brother drafted. Um, <laughs> and, uh, he's a Coburg VFL captain, which yes. is big, um, big for him, but talk to me through obviously your family. They've been massive throughout this whole journey. Yes. Family. Amazing support. Um, yeah. I really, really could not do it without my family. Yeah. Um, brother, yes, very big support as well. Yeah, he he's always there, always yeah. like supportive in his own way, yeah, which yeah. is like I love that. Um, he's always comes to the hospital to visit. He's very funny. Um, will do anything for me as well. Yeah, um, that's a bond of siblings, though. Oh, it is. Yeah, I don't get. I don't, I don't understand people that aren't close to their siblings personally. Neither. We're very, very close, which is very good, and I love that. Yeah. Um, it's just the two of you? Yes, just the two of us. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Younger. So, and you guys are sort of, what, two, three years apart? Three years apart. Yeah, okay. So similar to me, my sister. Yeah, I get it. I actually get it because literally, like, I've, my, I've, my, I've, how many times I've rocked up to my sister's place, just been like, I need to talk, just to talk. So it's amazing when you've got that bond with someone. Oh, so special. Just, and it's great. I don't think you can ever, uh, I don't think you can ever replace that. They really are your best friends, in my opinion. Oh, they are. Yeah, he's He's a legend. Uh, by Love far. Him. So what, talk to me through, I mean, what's the, the plan with the docs realistically moving forward? Um, is there yeah. a plan going forward? So the plan will be, we're ho like, hopefully this disease, you can get into remission, amazing. which would be amazing, right? That is the goal and that is what I want. And is that, that why is they're going hard at the once a month at the moment? Yes. So yeah. the plan is once a month, hopefully we can get this, kick it in the butt. Like, and if we get into remission, oh, dim, that's all my hopes and dreams come yeah, true, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. then I can travel as long as I want. I can get that job. Everything is good. That's I golden. Um, so we're at once a month at the moment. I can't quite say that it's actually working, but, yeah. you know. Has it improved it? No, it has not. So I have the biggest problem that I have is my vision. Um, and I've actually, all the vision loss was in the right eye, but just like last month I've lost vision in my left eye as well. So we've had to hit it 
we can't come any closer than once a month, I don't think. Yeah. But I can I get rescue med in between if I need, which is um, a high dose steroid IV. So just last week I had three days of the IV high dose steroid as right. well as the other. So the it, it sort of changes from the right to the left. It's both. So it's in both eyes now. Yeah. Um. So we just have to, you know, we just keep rolling with the punches, and we and, see. And why does it attack the eye? That's, I guess, where that's where it started. I think. Right. Well, it started with the seizures, but then it's gone to the eyes. The seizures have gone. Thankfully, yes. That's yeah. yeah. Amazing. Um, I only have them coming out of anaesthetic now. Okay. Um, but not day to day. Yeah. I can't even tell you the last time I had a seizure. Touch wood. Yeah. But yeah. So and 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 things like driving or exercise, um, certain foods, all that type of stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, what does that look like? So driving, I actually drove for the first time in like five years the other day, which is insane. Um, I can't drive at night, but okay. yeah, I can drive in certain conditions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, drove for the first time. It was amazing. It felt so weird. Um, the control of the car is exactly the same. It's just yeah, yeah, learning yeah. that like, cause I have a bit of peripheral vision loss, yep. like where that is with, in regards to the car. Yeah. Um, without sounding stupid and it probably just having to be as a question, but, um, uh, like right now with what we're mm. doing, where is there a particular loss in the, in an eye, in the eye that is different for you? So I can see like, it's very hard to explain. I can see everything, but like, I can't see like the side. So what we could see yeah. if I'm explaining. Yeah, okay. yep. yeah. So if we're looking like, I just can't see like that side and that side. So I very much see kind of like straight on. Okay. Right. Okay. No, yeah. it's just good just to know. Yeah. Yeah. More than anything. Okay. So it's more the sides, like the, the boundary, I'll call it. Yeah. Right. You're more up the guts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly right. I'm straight up the guts. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. So you can probably tell that I've lost about 25 kilos. Yeah. <laughs> That's a joke. for uh, um, No. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And then obviously exercise and stuff. Does that impact on you or? So I don't do like much like full on heavy exercise, more just like like the Pilates and walking, yep. stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's stuff like oh, hypothetically running on a treadmill or anything like that. I haven't run on a treadmill in a very long time, Jim. It's you and I both. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We've got something in common. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so don't worry about that. <laughs> That's awesome. No, okay. Okay. So it's more just for me just sort of building a picture as to yeah, how, how it's sort of- life like kind yeah, of works. And yeah. like food wise, I eat like whatever I want. I just have to take medication every time I eat. Um, really? I don't absorb much food, which is why I am so tiny. I just really Have you always struggle. had a sort of like a light frame? No. Crazy. Just all of a sudden tanked like 10 kilos and now I can't put it back on. I've had feeding tubes to try and help put weight on. We don't know why. I really struggle. So you don't have much of an appetite? I have heaps of an appetite. I can eat heaps. I just can't put the weight on. It's I drink like the supplement drinks. Really? Yeah. 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 I had a feeding tube and it was awful, 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 where like they fed me at night. So like the, you know, the like oh. the tube, it was, that was traumatic. I hated it. The worst thing ever. Yeah. You've um, had like. I've seen the, the as again. I've seen the footage and the videos that you've put on maybe TikTok yeah, or something. TikTok, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. TikTok and, has all my medical stuff. Yeah, like. yeah. I think we'll put a. Um, we'll definitely make sure that we link the t the TikTok, the TikTok, so so people can get a bit of an understanding as to exactly how it's been for you. Um, so it's just yeah. It's, again, it's ridiculous. Um, and. As I said, the reason why we wanted to have you on was exactly for this, was to understand and build a bit of a story and a background as to exactly the type of person that you are and the strength that you go with day to day. I hope that if it helps one person who's going through um, something yeah. to show that the strength that you've got is incredible. That's all I do it for. If I can help one person that's going through something similar, something else. Whatever it might be, yeah. Literally, that's all I want to ever share my story for. Yeah. If I can connect with one person or help them feel more positive or change their mindset about yeah. something, that's that's all I'm here for. Now, there's always the thing that we finish off with the humble three, but I'll be very remiss of me not if I didn't mention some of our sponsors. Yep, um, for it. One of the best, obviously, being Gigi Hair and Kids, which you actually get your hair done by, by the best, Marissa. So if anyone 
Likes the hair. Yeah, go get it. I love it. I think it's 70 Berkeley Street, Huntingdale, and she's an absolute queen. And even if you've got kids, I don't personally have any kids yet, but she, they've got a little cool kids chair that you can sit with. It's a little cool car. They get the hair done. You can do everything. Right. Blow away with you the whole lot. So make sure you go and see Marissa and team, um, so, which is amazing. B&A Car and Truck Repairs. Obviously, they're flying all over the state at the moment, in and out of Ava and James's carding. So can't thank the guys enough. The best medical aesthetic and renew skin clinics when you need that time for that Botox. So Botox, Botox. Bot- when the time will come, I mean, it'll come for both of us, let's be honest. So either go down to uh, go down to South Melbourne there in Emerald Place or head down to Reservoir, depending what you want to do, and get to get some of that Botox. That might be a present for mum's birthday. Oh. That's what I normally do for my for my mum. It's fantastic. I just get a – no, I've, I've, I've said it on air before. So, um, you know, just a little bit of a touch-up. Thanks for coming. But she's fantastic, Zena. And uh, I said I strongly, strongly recommend it that when the time comes and you're ever after anything, make sure you get in touch with me. Tama, the DJ, any events that we've got coming up, he'll be doing my 30th shortly. So looking forward to that. So it'll be, it'll be fantastic. And if you're around, please come pass for a drink. I really mean I'll have to give you the address off air. I've seen like I've invited everyone anyway. I don't know. <laughs> I've invited everyone. It's meant to be like a 50 person thing. And before you know it, All in Melbourne's it just keeps there, on going up. It's crazy. Bonds are snowballs. I don't have any on display. I normally have them on display for the Humble Three, but. Um, a few of the uh, few of the fam in the office has actually gone berserk on the bonds of snowballs. There's these these marshmallows, coated marshmallows. It's incredible. Um, really nice to snack on. For someone like me, I can't oh, stop. Yeah. So uh, there's a probably a bad, not a bad thing that they're not on. But um, I'll make sure we send some of your way. And lastly, the absolute best water wall prints. Your brother would love this. So you know, one of his footy jerseys. Get it nice, and, oh, yeah, nice, nice and framed. Put in his bed in, in the bed in the yep. bedroom. Of course, I've got heaps of them from my sort of younger days of what could have been and um, <laughs> stick them all over the place. So whatever you need, or I heard you're into gymnastics. I was. Yeah. yeah so maybe gymnast. you can put it like a, what do they pull a ribbon or what do they put? Gymnastics. Yeah, leotard. leotard. That's the one. Um, Rhythmic gymnast. Uh, I was, I was artistic. Oh, you're Another artistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. I've been artistic for a while. So, um, so what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll, we'll, you know, anything you need, go and see James and he'll sort you out, get it nice and framed, look fantastic above the bed head and just, uh, remember, uh, the, the good old days. So that's what I'll do with my soccer stuff. So just would be very remiss if I didn't mention some of the, uh, sponsors that get behind us. So I can't yeah. thank these guys enough for continuing to help us grow because these are the lifeline and well, the, the viewers are lifeline, but these guys obviously financially are, are getting behind it. So it's a massive, massive thank you to enable us to bring stories like this one to life. Now, what we always finish with is the humble three. So it's the same three questions that we ask every guest. Now, the first one, I'll be honest with you, is not what we normally ask is if you weren't in the current professional, what would you be doing? I'm going to change this one. I'm changing. I'm getting rid of it because obviously for yourself, we know what your dream job wants to be. So we want to get you into sports events and we will get you there. But why sports events? Just quickly. A, growing up an elite athlete has made me want to do that. But I like helping people achieve things and you look at it and you're just like, wow, when, when have you not been to a sport event and looked at it and just been like, how did people make this happen? Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Again, I don't even know where you keep on coming up with these amazing responses from, but you're just incredible. Uh, sec- the second question that I wanted to ask is if you could have a billboard, what would it say and why? Don't be fooled by the facade. So if you look at me or anyone looks at me walking past the street, you wouldn't look twice and think of what I'm going through. I look, I sit here looking perfectly healthy. You said it multiple times through the podcast. You, One day I'm at a winery, next day I'm in hospital. Yeah, it's crazy. But that doesn't just go for me. That goes for anyone. Look at people's Instagram, for example. It's a highlight reel. You have no idea about them. Oh, yeah, it's such a facade. I yeah. so agree. So I think you need to take time to get to know people to really understand what people are going through. I think that's like so like there's such a strength in that in really getting to know someone and understanding them on a deeper level. You're incredible. The last one I was going to ask was generally what we ask is who inspires you most. I'll be very honest with you. I don't know if you could really find anyone that would inspire anyone other than you because I don't know traditionally we all say our mom, our dad, our sister, our veterinarian, you name it. But I really would struggle to find someone like there's a couple of people that I said that I've Sally and Dave, Sally and Dave McCarthy that were once on the podcast inspire me genuinely. And I'll be very honest with you, like chatting with you, getting to know you on a deeper level now, obviously while we've been chatting throughout the last couple of weeks, like you're on that list for me, like you just inspire me the way that you attack work, attack your, sorry, attack your day to day. So from me to you, 
rather than you to me. Like you genuinely inspire me every day to want to get up because uh, you're incredible at what you do. So I wanted to make sure that you knew that and you were well aware of that. And I think that hopefully there was going to be some other people here as well that are going to see that. And I love that don't be fooled by the facade because it's uh, the most true thing ever. So I'm sure you have got someone that maybe inspires you. Um, potentially maybe your mum, I don't know. Yeah, no, uh, firstly, I'm like honoured and humbled. Thanks, Please. Tim. That like actually means so much. But yeah, it, it is my mum. Like I, this journey wouldn't be possible without her. She's never once complained to me, crumbled, cried, anything. She is, she's more than my mum. She is my idol. She's yeah. my hero. She, it wouldn't, I wouldn't be here without her. And you know, your mum would say, your mum would say who inspires her, surely. I think I know who the answer would be. It's probably going to be you. So um, I think you, uh, I hope you give yourself the amount of credit that you do because, uh, yeah, you're just an incredible, incredible person. As I said, I was obviously chatting with Marissa on the way. We were having coffee quickly this morning before uh, we said, I said, I got Ebony on. She goes, I know. She goes, I shed her head on the other day. And, um, and even just chatting with her off air, like about just what an amazing person you are. But I'll keep on saying it, but seriously, you've got to do me a favor if you can. Make your Instagram public so that people can see it. It's, it's public. <laughs> is it public? It's okay, public. good, 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 good. Um, because I want people to understand exactly the type of person that you are because one day you're going to be on the speaking circuit about how inspirational that you are and it's all going to happen and it started on the Humble Climb as well yeah. anyway. No, I'd love that. I'd love to do inspirational speaking. I think you That'd deserve it. A massive thank you for coming on the Humble Climb. I really appreciate you taking me on the opportunity and uh, for here to spread your awareness and spread your story. No, thanks, Jimmy. We'll make sure that we find you uh, that sports event gig when the time's right because it will happen, and I know that, and I'm so positive of that. Guys, continue to obviously uh, love us and uh, show us plenty of love on the socials. TikTok now we're even on. We're doing everything. TikTok, we're on Insta. We've always been on Insta, Facebook. We're on everything. We're, we, don't, we don't stop. So, and a massive thanks again to the sponsors. So continue to tune in, subscribe, and share these stories if you can because if there's anything that I want to come out of these types of stories, it is – the outlook that somebody at the age of 26 is holding um, with the set of circumstances that they've been dealt. So a massive thank you again, Ems. Thanks, Tim. I'll chat to you guys soon. Hooroo.